you see today in American politics and politics anywhere that as a politician, I would rather preserve my possibility for being reelected than to fight against legislation or for legislation that would cap carbon emissions and at least begin to change the possibilities for effects of climate change, but they don't. Here's the bottom line. Every proposal they put forward are going to be proposals that will make it harder to do business in America, that will make it harder to create jobs in America. Well, I'm not a big believer in man-made climate change. Regarding the question as to climate change, I think the president was fairly straightforward. Is that we're not spending money on that anymore. We consider that to be a waste of your money. Last week, Scott Pruitt was trying to ease concerns of staff at the Environmental Protection Agency. But today, he was telling CNBC what his critics have feared most that he is not convinced carbon dioxide from human activity is the main driver of climate change. I think people choose to turn their backs on what's taking place in the natural world. I think it's a, I think there's more intention to it than people want to confess to. As my beloved husband said, if you're not part of the solution to things, you're just taking up space. And if that's the kind of participant you want to be in our civil society, then that's, a, that's an easy choice to make, but with terrible consequences. I want to watch reality shows. I, want, I am closing down my life into some false fabrication that keeps me from looking at the way that things truly are evolving within the natural world and within human civil society. And that is culture trumping common sense. I, I think that the, the extinction crisis is the true canary in the mine shaft. Dr. E.O. Wilson was telling me that we know of about two million species. An estimated total of perhaps as many as 10 million species. But within the two million we know, the percentage that are going extinct is quite high. If you think about it from an ethical point of view, there is no way you can escape the reality that human-caused changes on this planet are devastating the non-human world. It is not the canary in the mine shaft. It's millions of dying canaries in all mine shafts. And yet, to change our style of life and our manner of being is so difficult for we humans that we're willing to sacrifice those sentient beings who have absolute inherent value all their own, they don't need us to value them. But how we humans can separate ourselves <laughs> somehow from thinking that if all of these species are disappearing at this extraordinarily fast rate, what does that mean for us? From the most selfish point of view, you would stop to think and say, oh my God, maybe we should think about this. But largely we don't. A biologist whom I know sent around that the little rabs tree frog went extinct about a month ago. It was like an epiphany for me that I was alive on the day that this tree frog went extinct. So in three minutes, I just sat down, I wrote this out, and then I hit whatever button you hit, and off it goes into the blogosphere or the facesphere. It goes like this. Rab's tree frog. The last surviving Rab's fringe-limbed tree frog went extinct today. Stop all the presses. Stop all the cars stop all the chaos that has become our lives. So stop what you're doing, I don't care what, 
and be silent for this tree frog as its light blows out. Ask the mother for forgiveness for what we have wrought. First, today's energy independence action calls for an immediate reevaluation of the so called Clean Power Plan. Perhaps. Perhaps no single regulation threatens our miners, energy workers, and companies more than this crushing attack on American industry.